Next time you're in Goodwill, stop on over to their houseware section. They have some awesome wood pieces that you can get really inexpensively. Like this, you're my McDreamy sign. Anybody else a Grey's Anatomy fan? No, okay. Well, then you wouldn't get why I grabbed this sign. Okay, it's a little crusty musty, okay? It's very rustic as well, which I love. And it was only $1.99, so we're going to upcycle this. It does have holes on the back in case we wanted to hang it on the wall. I'm not gonna do that though when you use this for a front door sign. But first we had to get rid of all the little stickies on the back. Then I grab my little finger sander and give this a nice sand down. Now with pieces like this, especially since it's wood, we could have sanded down and stripped the whole piece if we wanted to, to the bare wood. But I decided that I wanted to just share with you all that if you are not harboring every DIY tool in the shed out back, you can still upcycle pieces like this with bare minimum supplies and little adjustments adjustments with some prepping to still get really high-end finishes, whether you're keeping them at home or reselling them. When I was all done, I grabbed a baby wipe and gave this a nice wipe down. It wasn't overly dirty, but depending on how dirty your piece is, you might need to grab something like Krug Cutter or some dish soap and give it a nice scrub. I want to bring back some of that vibrance of the wood, so I'm just using Waverly's Antique Wax on a baby wipe to do that. If your piece does not have a sealer over it, it is a simple way to give old wood a updated, vibrant look. Plus some of those older woods got that yellow hue and this helps knock that off and give it a beautiful brown tone. When the antique wax was dry, I grabbed some painter's tape and just trimmed off the center of our piece here. I wanted to make sure that we didn't get any white paint on the part that we just worked so hard to update. The white paint is going to serve two functions for this part. One, it's going to cover up those words no longer want to see. And two, it's going to give us a nice base for our decoupage to have that design really pop through. I highly recommend using a chalk paint or a clay based chalk paint for this, even a multi-surface over an acrylic paint, it's going to save you so many extra coats. For the decoupage portion, we're going to be putting a little welcome-ish sign on here. For anyone interested, this is TDS decoupage paper. It is part of my own personal creative brand and can be found at the DIYstruggle.com. I have over 40 designs for you to choose from. This is tissue paper and it's super easy to work with. I'm trimming this little design down to size and for our medium, I'm just going to use some Mod Podge but people use whatever decoupage paper, napkins, medium, you would like to upcycle your pieces. This is just what works best for me and some of my favorite things. And obviously I love using my own products and sharing them and how amazing they are with you. Since I wanna do the iron-on method, I put a nice, thick, juicy layer of Mod Podge all over this and allowed it to dry. And then I took the little sections that I had to trim out and just kind of tore around the edges because I feel like when I go back over these pieces, it's better to have it like this to blend in with some paint. When your Mod Podge is all dry, it is now time to bring one in the iron. Now people, you do not have to use this iron. I keep this little sucker right next to me while I'm crafting and I will turn this all the way up. Feel free to use what iron works best for you. And you're also gonna need some parchment paper. You're gonna want to line that up over your piece once you have everything in place and then iron from one side to the next. The parchment paper is going to help protect your piece and your iron from sticking together and creating any issues as you're ironing on your decoupage paper or your napkin. When your piece is all ironed on, if you wanna go around with your sandpaper, you can go ahead and trim off any excess. If you have any touch-ups, you go right ahead and do that as well. A little tip, if you have sections where you had torn off, you can take some of the paint that was in the background, take your thumb after you tap 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 some of that paint on there and just pull it away and it will help that paint blend right in to your paper. If you wanna seal over this, I would recommend letting it dry for at least 24 hours and then putting a nice thin layer over top of your piece. Goodwill had this unique little tea light candle string piece. And I'm like, this just 
needs a little updating and I think will be good. And if you like the design, I'm sorry, but it's gotta go. Starting with the string. I mean, really, I thought it was glued in there, but it wasn't. I <laughs> just snipped the end off and out it came. Now we had these holes to deal with, so I grabbed this stuff, which I love this stuff. It's buttery soft. It's really inexpensive. You can pick it up from Walmart for like four bucks and it works so good. So I just shoved some of it in these holes. I let it dry like 30 minutes and then came in with a baby wipe and just wiped everything down. These might have been the cleanest pieces I ever thrifted. I don't even think any dirt came off. Oh, and did I forget to tell you how much this was? $2.99 people. And do you see where the tag actually came from? Hobby Lobby for $12.99. Since I want to decoupage these, I'm going to give them a nice base coat. Use whatever white paint you would like. The paint just helps the design to pop. And I really like the way that chalk paint gives a good coverage and I don't have to go back over it with so many layers. It just kind of saves me some time. How about this beautiful napkin? And what I love about napkins like this is when you open it up, it's kind of a whole piece. It's not like four different sections. I like the ones that are four different sections too, but I just feel like I get a little bit more play out of these. I cut down three little sections to size to fit over the cubes. And then I pulled the sneaky little layers off the back. It's important to make sure you're just using the top decorative layer, those extra sneaky layers on the bottom. If you leave them on, it can be troublesome trying to get the Mod Podge to actually stick to that top decorative layer. And there's several different ways you can do this. One is just tearing a corner like I am here and it usually reveals the extra layers. I'm just using some Mod Podge. You can absolutely use whatever medium you would like. And whenever I decoupage napkins, a go-to for me is a fan brush. I just like how thin they are at the tip. So if I got to shove them in any little sections, they get in there without having a whole lot of excess anywhere. And I also like to say less is more. You don't need a ton of medium. Just put a little bit on and do section by section if you're not doing the iron on method. I also like to use a sponge. This is a dry sponge. You can pick these up at Walmart in a pack of like six and then press straight down. It helps to absorb any excess Mod Podge and also flatten your piece out without having too many wrinkles. And right here, I did a little close up so you could see how the Mod Podge does seep up through the napkin. So the sponge really does help grab any excess and help reduce wrinkles. You can absolutely decoupage all the sides of your pieces if you find stuff like this. For the video and for time's sake, I just did the front. And honestly, I kind of like having the white on the sides kind of pop out. I feel like the design on the napkin stands out even more. Once I have my piece on there, sometimes I like to grab a little bit of cling wrap and kind of just go over it just to smooth out any extra little lumpy bumpies that could possibly be in here. When these were all dry, I just sanded off the excess and people check these out. How amazing did these look? Sometimes a napkin, napkin, don't ever, ever, ever count the napkins out. They can really elevate pieces with a little bit of decoupage. I absolutely fell in love with this large wood piece I found at Goodwill. The details on it from the handle to the design that was in the wood all around the entire piece. And let's not forget how amazing the condition of the piece was. It was just screaming for me to decoupage it. And before anyone goes light me up in the comments about that I check online, yes, I did. It is retailed at $29.99 on eBay currently. That's not going to stop me from decoupaging it. I paid a whole $1.99 and I'm like, mm, 
I could probably resell my art on here for the same. One of the struggles with upcycling is you never know what you're dealing with. And I wasn't sure how this was on here. I thought it was like a sticky backing. So I grabbed my heat gun, I heated it up, and then I grabbed a little plastic card and trying to peel it up and that wasn't working. Since this isn't my first rodeo with this, I knew to grab some soapy water and a little scraper. So I took some soapy water and just started spraying and I let it sit for like 10 minutes and then I would just scrape, scrape, scrape and peel it up. And for those of you that are like, Brandy, why didn't you just sand the whole piece? Listen, I want it to preserve the wood around the edges. I only to get the design up. You could absolutely sand the whole thing completely off, but I risked damaging the beautiful wood on the edges and I didn't want to do that. Now it did take me a couple hours of spraying it, soaking it, and then scraping it. I wasn't doing it consistently. You know what I mean? I'd spray it, come back, and then, you know, you know how you got other crafts going on. That's what I was doing. When it got down to this point, I gave it a nice sand and then came in and wiped off all the excess before we got started. Now that we're down to the bare minimum of what I was hoping to have to start our decoupage. Around the edges, I'm just taking a little bit of antique Waverly wax and freshening up the wood. If your piece isn't sealed over, this allows you to kind of give wood a new life. It gets rid of any orange or yellowish hues to the wood and just helps bring some of that dark brown depth back to the stain. Especially if you don't want to completely sand down your piece and start all over again. When that was all dry, I grabbed some painter's tape and then just kind of squared off the section that we kind of tore up to death. I used some white chalk paint so we had a nice base for our decoupage paper. And people, I do want to share with y'all that there was a little bit of tannis going on, which is some bleed through. You'll notice sometimes you might paint something and then some yellowing pops through. Now you can get a stain blocker and then paint that on there and then paint back over with your paint and you won't see that yellow no more. But for this project, I knew it wasn't going to show up. So I just carried on with my Mod Podge and I put a nice thick layer on here and allowed it to dry. And once it was all dry, people, you know what time it is. Say it with me. It's time to bring on in the iron. Now, if you're not familiar with me, any iron for this method will do. I keep this little joint right next to my craft table, so that's why I use it. I turn it all the way up, and that's how I do this method. For the decoupage paper, we're going to be using my own personal brand, TDS Decoupage Paper. This print is so pretty. I absolutely love the designs in this. Obviously, this tissue paper is pretty large, and I'm not going to be able to use the entire design. So picking a section was pretty rough, but I managed. Then the trick was trimming it down even more. So this way the design fit perfectly over the section that we had layered the Mod Podge on. Now a little tip if you go to redo a piece like this, whether you're using a napkin, whether you're using your paper, whatever, because it doesn't have to be this exact decoupage paper, you're gonna wanna take just the tiniest bit of your medium and line around the edges that you have already mapped out. This is going to guarantee that if there is any bit of hangover, it's gonna stick when you have that ironed on there. Make sure you use a piece of parchment paper if you go to do this. That is going to help protect your paper and your iron. It allows heat to pass through it, so this way your napkin or your tissue paper or your regular paper will melt right on into that Mod Podge. Just pick a side and gently work your way to the opposite side, making sure to flatten out as you go. In a bowl off camera, I mix a little bit of baking soda, calcium carbonate, and some glue to create a texture paste. And I added a little bit of acrylic paint that matched our beautiful decoupage paper that we have here. I grabbed a stencil and then just put a little design around the edges in a few spots. And people, how gorgeous did this turn out? It is absolutely stunning.
If you enjoyed these makeovers and are looking for more upcycling inspiration, check out this video right here. As always, thank y'all so much for hanging out with me and until next time, bye.